This transportation TV program is made possible in part by the Associated General Contractors of America, AGC. Quality people, quality projects. This is the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. Federal Aviation Administration Deputy Administrator Michael Huerta was appointed FAA Acting Administrator this week after Tuesday's sudden resignation of former Administrator Randy Babbitt. Huerta has been leading the FAA's effort to deploy a new air traffic control system called NextGen, which relies on global positioning system or GPS technology rather than land-based systems. In other news, the U.S. Department of Transportation on Thursday announced updated 2010 fatality and injury data showing that highway deaths fell to 32,885 for the year. That's the lowest level since 1949. The record-breaking decline in traffic fatalities occurred even as Americans drove nearly 46 billion more miles during 2010, an increase of 1.6 percent over 2009. Our news in depth segment this week focuses on high-speed rail. France and Japan have used so-called bullet trains for decades. Relative newcomer, China, has spent billions over the past few years to create the world's largest high-speed rail network, covering more than 6,000 miles and reaching speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour. America's only high-speed train, Amtrak's Acela, serves the 456-mile Northeast Corridor stretching from Washington to Boston. Acela can reach speeds up to 150 miles per hour, but its average speed is about 75 miles per hour. The Obama administration is spending $10 billion on high-speed and inner-city passenger rail projects. At a hearing on Capitol Hill this week, Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood said the administration stands by its goal of making high-speed rail accessible to 80 percent of all Americans. We know that as this system emerges, jobs, economic development, and economic competitiveness will follow. In the short term, we're creating manufacturing construction jobs. These are American jobs building the next generation of America's infrastructure. But Florida Republican Representative John Micah, chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, is not convinced. He says spreading passenger rail funds across several states and corridors is the wrong approach. We have three what I call pseudo high-speed rail projects, Chicago to St. Louis. That's going to run an average of 71 miles an hour. Chicago to Detroit, is uh, that route goes at 60 four miles an hour on average, a snail speed train, followed by a, a Portland to Vancouver so-called um, uh, and named high-speed rail project, which is 65 miles an hour. These are, again, um, uh, a bait and switch uh, for high-speed rail and will continue to give high-speed rail uh, a, a bad name. Micah says the best idea is to focus federal funding and stimulate private investment in the Northeast Corridor, which the chairman described as the only viable location for true high-speed rail in the country. Willing to work with the uh, administration, with other members of Congress, and uh, in an effort to, uh, again, end the, uh, the failure that we've seen and hopefully have a pattern for success for high-speed rail in the future. Secretary LaHood defended the administration's policy as the fair way to distribute funds, and he stood by California's plan to link San Francisco and Los Angeles, despite new projections pointed out by Chairman Micah. Now the projections on the cost may uh, double the original 40-some uh, billion dollars and reach uh, over 90 uh, billion dollars. Uh, furthermore, it appears that there be a 13-year delay. We're now looking at, what, 2033? Uh, We're committed to helping the people of California achieve their vision for high-speed rail. This is not Ray LaHood's vision. This is California's vision. This is the people's vision. People that have worked on high-speed rail in California for 15 years. It's not a cheap project, but it's an essential one. 
Chairman Micah said his committee will convene a hearing to examine the California high-speed rail project next week. That's the Transportation TV News update. Thanks for watching. This Transportation TV program is made possible in part by the Associated General Contractors of America, AGC, quality people, quality projects.